the past decade, the EU faced multiple crises in various sectors. The 2010 volcanic ash cloud, the influenza pandemic, and the Ebola outbreak, the refugee crisis, and an increasing number of terrorist attacks on European soil. Fundamentally, a crisis is an abnormal event that strikes at the heart of an organization, threatening its strategic objectives, reputation or viability. Crises can take various forms and by nature are difficult to predict and prevent. I think everybody is witnessing the migration crisis. I think a lot needs to be done and that is probably something that Europe was not prepared for. Unfortunately, only if something very serious happens, there will be an increase of political awareness and the willingness to work together. If you're not prepared, you're not be able to react properly. And if you don't uh, exercise and test elements of your contingency plans, if you don't have business continuity plans, if you don't have recovery plans, then actually your business or critical infrastructure could fail and have significant, uh, uh, maybe EU-wide uh, implications. Understanding common denominators empowers the crisis management community to better prepare for them. And this side can build on experience of other fields which build these capabilities after a crisis. But I think the wise man learns on mistakes of others. In line with the Lisbon Treaty, the role of the EU is to facilitate cooperation between member states, complementing national policies to cover monitoring, early warning, and combating serious cross-border threats. If you remember, for example, what happened after the tsunami in the Indian Ocean, then the response there was very fragmented. Now things have changed. We are 28 member states. Seeking agreement is not always easy, but we are progressing. And the way we are managing crisis now is certainly much, much more effective than it was years ago. Several of the crises in recent years have sparked firm EU-level action and indeed prompted the emergence of common operational and legal frameworks within and across sectors. What we learned in aviation is that through the EU structures, technical level uh, can, can have access to the political level in case of crisis because there are some crises in which uh, there are no solutions, uh, there are no existing solutions to resolve them with the current capabilities. As a direct result of the volcanic ash cloud, which disrupted air traffic for several days, Eurocontrol was mandated by the European Commission to coordinate the response to crises affecting the aviation network and effectively set up the European Aviation Crisis Coordination Cell. There are certain things certainly which you can do better at the national level, but they are from the aviation experience, we know that there are some things which you do uh, better at the European network level. As soon as you have information that you can use, you are better prepared. I think cooperation, coordination, talking to each other and really timely information sharing. I think that's crucial. Several frameworks have been developed to deal with crises at EU level, in sectors such as aviation, health or border control. Crises starting in the cyber domain are already a reality. Nevertheless, no EU-level framework fully takes into consideration this threat. There will be no awareness until something very, very big, which involves a lot of member states, happen. The awareness is growing, I think, and uh, slowly progressing, as in every <laughs> European affairs, but it is, it is progressing, and this is uh, important. Cyber attacks and subsequent crises are both cross-border and cross-sector by nature, with the potential to strike a large number of targets at any given time. In this regard, the role of the EU is all the more critical. Some areas are more prepared than others, but of course, in terms of cyber, it's a rapidly evolving space, and as a consequence, there's a likelihood that the areas are weaker than others. So I think that there is probably room for improvement. One important thing is to get the clear mandate from the Member States on what is the field where ENISA can add value. I think this is, this is probably the most important thing. And once this mandate is clear, then to start preparing, preparing for that, and then to, to run exercises to check the level of the preparedness. 
So actually there's clear need to actually have a coordinating function, preferably in the EU, I think. Crisis managers in the cyber domain have the ability today to write their own future by analysing lessons learned from their experienced counterparts in various traditional crisis management fields, they can avoid repeating history. We always say never waste a good crisis because you can learn from the lessons learned. If you're honest, you can learn a lot of things about where it went wrong and why did it go wrong. But I would not wait until the crisis happens. The cyber threat is real and it should be important. But I think that it does not receive the attention that it should receive. I fear that, uh, as it happens every time, uh, only after a big disaster there, are, there is this uh, willingness of uh, finding uh, uh, remedies. Enisa runs several activities in the field of cyber crisis management, including exercises, studies, training and provides support to member states the agency drives forward the development of a cyber crisis management culture in European cyber security for the protection of European citizens, assets and values.